Hey everybody, it's Chris. Um, I bought a cake spinner um, back before all the COVID stuff started and kind of took a break from painting for a bit. And I remembered that I bought this cake spinner and still have not tried it out. So let me kind of explain to you what my setup is. I have Ranger's puppy pool on my table and then I have a big plastic garbage bag inside of it so that I don't ruin his pool. And then I'm going to paint on an 18 inch round today and I am going to use a black pillow. So I've gone ahead and painted the edge of my round with black because I'm worried that with it being a white um, primer that I have on it, it may not look really great on the edges if I don't paint the black. So let me show you how I have it here. I've got, um, this is my cake turner and I purchased it off of Amazon. I'll put a link in the description in case you're interested in purchasing one so that you can find this one easily. Um, this is kind of what everyone has been using that I've watched on YouTube. And then I'm just gonna place this on here. I'm hoping that it will not um, slip off, but I have a feeling it might. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit of tape on here, make sure that this is centered, and then I will be right back. Okay, so I've got it secured to the turntable with just a little bit of shipping tape just so that it doesn't slide around as I start to um, spin it out. Um, I'm not gonna get that crazy with my spinning, so it should hold in place. So earlier today, I was working on um, some little votive candle holders for my Etsy store, and I did a color combination that I thought was really beautiful and kind of reminded me of a peacock. So I thought, you know what, I wanna do this as, um, well, this will turn into a Lazy Susan, but I thought I wanna do this on a much bigger scale. So I do not have, um, I do not have any black house paint, so I'm going to use my Artist Loft Flow Acrylic. Um, this actually has been mixed with my pouring medium already, but then I added a little bit more black to it just so that it would be a thicker base because you want your pillow paint to be the thickest part of your, um, of your items in the Shelly art style. So what we're going to do is we're going to build a bloom and we're going to spin it out. Okay, so. I have a little bit of Artist Loft Metallic Cobalt, which is one of my favorite colors. So since we're building such a big bloom, I'm gonna start with a lot of paint in the center. And I know it's gonna seem like a crazy amount, but this is a really large surface to get across. So I wanna make sure that I can get across. The next one is the Dioxazine Purple. I told you Reflex Violet, but it was actually the Dioxazine Purple that I used. And again, using a lot of paint so that there's a lot of pigment on here and a lot of color. I really want this to be, I know how I want it to look. We'll see if it turns out that way. I think sometimes when I do these things, I just don't put enough pigment down. And then I'm super disappointed that I don't get the color that I want. All right, so there's Dioxazine Purple. And I'm gonna put a little bit of interference violet in it. And this is a golden interference violet. Again, kind of an expensive one, but it's really beautiful and it's worth um, adding it into your project because it'll give it such an amazing um, sheen and really add a lot of interest to it. Okay, I'm going to use some green too, but I don't want that green next to the purple. So let's go ahead and put down the deep violet next. And like I said, I know it's a lot of pigment, but I really want it to be beautiful. Because this is much bigger than, you know, like a coaster or um, a six by six canvas. And then I'm going to put some turquoise on top of that. I think this is not quite even because I can see that my paint is kind of coming down here to this one side. So I'm just gonna go ahead and turn it a little bit. And because this is such a huge, <laughs> it's 
gonna be a huge bloom. I don't think I'm gonna try to blow this out um, with my mouth. I think I'm gonna grab my hair dryer and blow it out that way. And then finally is this beautiful yellow green color. Actually, before I do that, I'm gonna put some silver down. So remember, whatever your colors are on the base and on the top are usually the colors that will be more prominent in the bloom. That one went a little outside the box, didn't it? All right. All right, and then I'm going to add my cell activator. I'm just gonna turn this a little bit so that my paint is not flowing off the other side. I may end up adding a little bit more black to this, we'll see. All right, so I am think I'm just gonna pour this on because I do want quite a bit so that it flows out over the color. should do it. This is a big balloon, guys. Fingers crossed. All right, so I'm gonna use my hair dryer to blow down straight through the paint for the cell activator. And as always, I scooped right through the darn paint. Just seems to happen to me. Okay, so I am going to pick this up and kind of blow it a little bit with my mouth to kind of get those edges out there and see if I can get this a little bit more even. And then I think I want to use my straw to see if I can kind of help some of those areas a little bit more. And then I'm just going to kind of tip it so that it's a little bit more centered before I start to spin it out. But I do want to try to make sure that my color is in the center before I start to spin it out. We definitely have some beautiful cells. Okay, so I do think I wanna add just a tiny bit more black around this edge to make sure that I do get over the edge with the black. I'm hoping that my color will as well, but this will help it travel over the edge to ensure that we get good coverage. And I think once we start to spin, we'll be surprised at how far it'll come out. Oh my goodness, this is I'm excited guys. Fingers crossed that this works. Wow, those are beautiful colors. I'm gonna use my torch just to pop some of the bubbles that I have here. Because as I said before, sometimes it kind of creates pits and it's not so pretty when it does that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pop some of these bubbles so that we get the best possible end result. All right, are you ready? I'm hoping that my light's not reflecting too badly on this so that you're able to see it. All right, I'm gonna do it gently because I've, like I said, I've never done this before, so I don't wanna to get too crazy with it. Kinda of looks like a turtle. In fact, I kinda of feel like we should stretch it this way a little bit just to kind of widen it out a bit because I'm afraid I'm not going to get much color on the sides if I don't do that. There we go. 
I think my blow dryer was a little bit off centered when I did that. And I just want to make sure that we're kind of centered with our color and kind of have a nice design going. All right. So we're going to continue to spin it out. Look away if this bothers you. Hopefully I don't make anyone motion sick. That would be awful. And then I'm going to spin it the other way. I think I want to see if I can move this off the edge a little bit. So we're going to tilt it a bit and see if we can't get this over the edge over here because I don't want to keep spinning so that I lose all that really cool stuff that we have going where it has already tipped off. So I'm just going to very gently move it down to the edge there and then we'll tip it off the other way too. My goodness, those colors are beautiful. I have to say, I don't know that I've ever put quite that many colors onto something, but that is really pretty. So I'm tipping my Lazy Susan too, and I have a feeling like that's not a great idea. Because <laughs> I'm worried that the whole thing is gonna tip over and I'm really gonna have a mess. So we'll just do it this way. So I'm just slowly tipping it to try to get that color to move down there off of the other edge. I'm getting really close. Okay, so I'm almost off the edge with the black. Do you see that? There we go. So I'm just gonna kind of let that grab a hold. There we go, we've got color over there. And now I'm just gonna go ahead and tip back the opposite way and get the color. Actually, I think I might pick this up and see if we can get the color going off the other end. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut away and get this tipped off and then I'll bring you back on to show you the final spin, okay? All right guys, so I have tipped it so that the color is dispersed. Now I just wanna give it a couple of little spins here to finish it out. Just wanna make sure that my colors are going off the edge and that the whole thing is super pretty. Felt it move on the Lazy Susan. All right, guys, I think that is done. Love, love, love those colors. All right, so um, once again, kind of a peacock inspired pour. Um, I will list the colors that I use down below in the description. Um, I will also put a link to um, the Shelly Art course in case you'd like to learn more about this particular technique. And as always, if you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you so much for watching me today and I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.